Hi, I'm James the Light Guy, and today we're going to answer a quick question. You can find these so-called 200 watt ballasts on eBay. The question is, what are they really rated for? For comparison, we're going to be looking at this Zentec 55 watt slim ballast, and we'll be using a brand new set of H11 HIDs. Let me pause and open these up. Now that I've gotten them opened up, let's put one aside and take a look. Here we see it is H8, H9, H11 base type. We're going to set that down on our clean silicon pad. And we're going to hook up our 55 watt Zentech first. We're going to be using the standard aftermarket HID connector and our power supply. Making sure that we connect positive to positive. That clicks right in. And this end is fairly idiot proof. There we go, we're set up. We're gonna zoom down a bit and move the camera over to see our power supply or move our power supply over to be in field of the camera. Let's turn it on. All right, we see that initial current is 3.3 .3 amps. We're a little high on voltage, let's turn that down. We go 14.4 volts and we're holding steady around 3.375 so we'll round up 3.4 amps that's about 49 watts so this 55 watt ballast is running a bit shy you can see that this bulb is very bright and it's actually putting off quite a bit of heat we're going to grab our light box. Let's zoom back out. And since I've already done a fair bit of testing, we're going to set this to times 100 on the meter. We're going to make sure that our electrode bar is facing away from the sensor and we're just going to dive this down into the hole and get a reading. Looks like we are at 9495-ish. Now remember that that is times 100 rather than times 10, so that was about 950. Let's push this aside a moment, turn off our power supply, disconnect the bulb. Once again, we're going to set it down on our clean silicon cooling pad, disconnect the Zentech ballast, and take a look at this one. It has a little xenomorph on it, large cooling fins. Obviously, it has the igniter as close to the bulb as possible to reduce electromagnetic interference and that static noise you hear on the radio. I've already removed the back, but as you can see, most of the components are completely hidden by the potting epoxy. Let's connect this one up to our power supply, making sure that we get positive to positive. And again, it uses the same standard connectors. Let's 
Let's zoom down while we watch this charge up. Turning on our power supply. It peaked at uh, 8.5 amps to start, and that's dropping down pretty quick now that ignition has completed. We're going to give this a few seconds to stabilize. See, we are at just about 7.5 amps, and we're holding steady about there. 7.5 times 14.4, this is 108 watts, roughly. So, about half of what it claimed to be rated for. Let's zoom back out. All right, making sure that we have that electrode in the back again. We'll plunge it down, and we are at 224. Ooh, caught the box on the way out, a little smoke. So, that is 2,240 lux, which is far greater than the 950 that we got from the 55 watt. So, in short, is this a 200 watt ballast? No. Is it way more powerful than a 55 watt ballast? Yes. Will it remove the chrome from the inside of your housing? Probably. This bulb is getting very, very warm. They make special bulbs with a ceramic base specifically for this application. And honestly, I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. Let me bring the bulb up to the microphone and maybe bring the ballast up to the microphone. But there is a high-pitched whine that I can hear from both of these. Longevity-wise, I've tested this on and off for about four months now, and it seems to be holding up pretty well, but only time will tell. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button for me, consider subscribing to my channel, share it with your friends, and until next time, I'm James the Light Guy.